Welcome to week 28. Your learning intention for today is that we'll examine why and develop a model about how sexual reproduction leads to offspring with genetic variation. Your agenda is on the left and your work due by Thursday is on the right from day one. So be sure to complete your check-in on slide three, your classwork slides five, seven, and 14, the jam board on Punnett squares and the exit ticket on slide 17. Friday homework support as usual is, on, um, is in the morning from 9.30 till 11.30 a.m. This week's classwork slides will count toward the digital interactive science notebook category. And so slide three has your check-in. Slide four, so I'm going to go through uh, all of day one's slides um, in case you are not able to join us in class. More than 170 years ago in the 1850s, an Austrian monk named Gregor Mendel, pictured to the right, performed the first genetics experiments. Here's a little gif. Hi, I'm Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel performed experiments that help answer questions about heredity. The results of his experiments also disproved the idea of blending inheritance. So this theory is in its um, in the speaker notes, but it's basically this idea that say you have a red flower and you also have a white flower. And if you cross them together, you're going to get a pink flower. So it was disproven this idea of blending inheritance in, back in the 19th century. And so it's because of Mendel's experiments about heredity that gave scientists a basic understanding of genetics. Because of his experiments, Mendel is known as the father of genetics. There's a little note here. Hi, I'm Gregor Mendel. I always wanted to be a scientist, but I failed my exam to become a teacher and my lowest marks were in science. Instead, I became a monk. I still wanted to be a scientist, so I did a little experiment with pea plants at the monastery. So we're gonna learn about his pea plants here. To study genetics, Mendel chose to work with pea plants because they have easily identifiable traits. For example, pea plants are either tall or short, which is an easy trait to observe. Furthermore, pea plants grow so quickly that he could complete many experiments in a short period of time. On the right-hand side, identify two reasons why Mendel chose pea plants. Pea plants were ideal for genetic studies because they reproduce quickly. So he's able to grow many plants and collect a lot of data. They have easily observable traits such as flower color or pea shape. And Mendel could control which pairs of plants reproduce. And so, over here at the bottom right, pea plants reproduce and grow quickly. This is one reason Mendel chose to work with them. Slide six, pollination in pea plants. Mendel also used pea plants because they could either self-pollinate or be cross-pollinated. To observe how a trait was inherited, Mendel controlled which plants pollinated with other plants. Pollination occurs when pollen lands on the pistil of a flower. So we've got a little flower anatomy here. Sperm cells from the pollen then fertilize egg cells in the pistil. And so fertilization, remember, is when a sperm cell and an egg cell combine. This is how sexual reproduction occurs. And we can combine the DNA from both parent organisms. There's a video here if you want to learn more. Slide seven, self-pollination occurs when pollen from one plant lands on the pistil of the flower of the same plant. Cross-pollination occurs when the pollen of one plant reaches the pistils of a flower from a different plant. Mendel allowed one group of flowers to self-pollinate. With another group, he cross-pollinated the plants himself. So in your own words for this reading check, explain the difference between self-pollination and cross-pollination in your own words. Okay, slide eight. Mendel was able to control which plants pollinated. Slide nine, true, ble bleh, true breeding plants. 
Mendel began his experiments with plants that were true breeding for the trait he would test. When a true breeding plant self pollinates, it always produces offspring with traits that match the parent plant. So for example, when a true breeding pea with wrinkled seeds self pollinates, it produces plants with wrinkled seeds. It will produce wrinkled seeds generation after generation. I should have, there should be an S there. Slide 10. Wait, what's true breeding? If you have ever heard of purebred puppies before, then you know what true breeding is. It's basically a true breeding organism, aka a purebred organism, is an organism that is always passing down a certain set of traits to its offspring. And so here we've got a purebred Labrador that's breeding with a purebred Labrador. So you're, they're always going to create purebred Labradors, right? for labs. Slide seven, sorry, slide 11. Mendel's cross-pollination. Mendel began his experiments with plants that were true breeding for the trait he would test. By cross-pollinating the plants himself, Mendel was able to select which plants pollinated other plants. This is called controlled breeding. Mendel crossed hundreds of plants for each set of traits he wanted to learn more about. The traits included flower color, purple or white, seed color, green or yellow, and seed shape, round or wrinkled. With each cross-pollination, Mendel recorded the traits that appeared in the offspring. By testing such a large number of plants, Mendel was able to predict which crosses would produce which traits. And again, remember, pea plants reproduce and grow quickly, and this is why Mendel chose to use them for his experiments. We go to slide 12. So let's see his results. Once Mendel had enough true breeding plants for a trait he wanted to test, he cross pollinated selected plants. So we're going to check out his results. First generation crosses. So Crosses bet between true breeding plants with purple flowers produced true breeding plants with only purple flowers. Crosses between true breeding plants and white plants produced true breeding plants with only white flowers. However, when Mendel crossed true breeding plants with purple flowers and true breeding plants with white flowers, the offspring had purple flowers. Hmm, so a question was raised. Why didn't the cross produce pink flowers, a combination of purple and white? Why were there no white flowers? And this should remind you of the mouse genetics. Remember when the mice had black fur and um, the mice who had black fur, pure black, and the mice who had pure white fur, when you cross them, you only got offspring that had black fur. And so this is the same thing. And so he's going to carry out more experiments to answer these questions. And then you have what you call a second generation of crosses. Mendel's first generation flower, first generation purple flowers are called hybrid plants. So if you have a purebred Labrador that is orange and a purebred poodle that is black, the next generation, the first generation here, are the um, Labradors that have traits from both. They're the hybrid version, right? Remember, a hybrid is the offspring resulting from combining the qualities of two organisms. And so these, um, the, the hybrid offsprings have the genetic traits of both parents. When Mendel crossed two hybrid purple flower plants, some of the offspring were white. Hmm. This is similar to the mouse genetics. Remember when we took the two hybrid uh, black mice and put them in the holding cages, and then we bred the hybrids? That was the only time we were able to see mice with black fur and mice with white fur. That trait disappeared in the first generation always appeared in the second generation. And so the reading check here is, in your own words, define a hybrid. 
So I've, I have a sentence started here for you. When an organism, plant or animal is hybrid, it means, and then dot, 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 seeing patterns. So Mendel got similar results each time he cross-pollinated true breeding green seed plants with true breeding yellow seed plants. The missing trait again always appeared in that second generation. Mendel saw these same patterns with each experiment. And so uh, when you're finished going through all of these slides from one through 15, slide 16 is letting you know that uh, you should check out the video that I will have linked here to be able to work on the Jamboard. Under Google Classroom, um, under week 28, you have an assignment that says Jamboard, uh, Punnett Squares, and so you'll work on five boards there. And if you want more information, check out the video to the right. Slide 17 is your exit ticket. So you're gonna watch the video below and write two facts you learned. And so again, here are, uh, here's a sentence frame. I learned how, I learned that, I learned when. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions and good luck.